Ain't Slayed Nobody is a produced actual play podcast intended for adults and may contain material that some people find disturbing. Please see the episode notes for content warnings and listen with care. After 27 years, Funland Management announced that the popular amusement park will close its gates for good, effective immediately. Mr. Fun's Big Twister has made his last run around the Funland Amusement Park. Following a year marked by scandal. Our innocence was such a gift. We traded it to feel in charge. In a press release, the owners of Funland denied any responsibility for these horrific crimes. So Kevin is inside the control room at the merry-go-round, still hand-cranking that mechanism. And one thing about this, as I mentioned, is that the support for it has partially collapsed. Now, you're having to put a fair bit of welly into this crank in order to get it to move around. It's a bit rusty, but with a bit of elbow grease, it's moving around. But it's jerking a bit from time to time. The music's all playing out of kilter. And it sticks for a moment. And you jam it down, you know, just that bit harder to get the handle to move. And this seems to be enough to actually upset the balance of the whole thing. The whole merry-go-round just lurches slightly. Oh, not too badly, but enough that you stagger a bit and the whole thing shakes. Now, Jason, as he's backing away from this mirror and the thing that's up against it, the mirror at this stage just shakes slightly as the whole merry-go-round trembles. And then you can just see it shift slightly and then topple over and fall to one side and smash on the ground. So can I go look at the shattered pieces? You certainly can. As you, you head over there, well, there's one of the bits, a fairly large bit on the ground, that has landed face up, the shiny side up. And as you go over to take a look, you see this, this grey shape again move inside it. But this time, as it does so, it reaches its hand up, and his hand comes up through the surface of the mirror and onto the ground beside. And then a moment later, the other hand comes up, and then it's starting to pull itself up, as if pulling itself up from a hole in the ground. The rest of you, at least outside, can see this, so that's both Max and Jonesy. Jason was prattling around with this mirror a moment ago. It's fallen over, it's shattered, and now, yes, there is this grey, spongy thing clambering out. Can I have sanity rolls off the two of you, please? 45 versus 60, that's a pass. 3 versus 65. Okay, so you're both holding it together, even as this happens. Yeah, again, you can see this this thing pushing itself up, and it's even weirder to look at than it seems at first, because... This broken shard isn't big enough for something that size to clamber out, and yet somehow it is. It's just pushing itself up, extruding itself up through, and the whole thing now is now up to its waist, and you can see its legs beginning to get out now as well. I reckon 
Jonesy at first thought that Jason was just doing this amazing YouTube bit and he's like oh yeah boy this is gonna go down so well and then this like creature starts dragging himself out and instead of panicking Jonesy's gonna see if there's like an iron bar or like a weapon nearby and he's gonna grab it and run towards this thing going oh no you don't you ringu motherfucker I'm gonna stop you right here get out of the way Jason I got you bruv (laughs) Jason had the camera right yeah. He had the camera with him in the tripod. I'm, I'm folding up the tripod to use as a bat. <laughs> and I'm going to maybe try to take a cut at the head of this thing as it's coming out. Oh, sure. Okay, so it sounds like you're going to be in a position to do that before Jonesy comes in and brings up the rear. I want you to roll Fighting Brawl as you're swinging this tripod stand. Oh, yeah. All right. 75 against a 30. <laughs> Okay, and this thing is trying to push its way past the tripod and seems to be trying to grab hold of you. And Kevin's just continuing the crank music. <laughs> so, as Jonesy is running in with his, his iron bar, he can see that this thing has grabbed hold of Jason's hand as Jason was bringing this tripod up to smack into it. Before Jason has a chance to get the tripod down, it's it's grabbed hold of the back of his hand. And you can see that its fingers, these spongy grey fingers, are sinking into Jason's flesh. Its hand is just disappearing inside. Oh, let go of my hand, you fucker! I got you, bruv, I got you! Oh, get this fucker off me! Max is going to run up and just try and punch the thing. As-, I, as the two of you are running in, let's just sort out one thing that will determine whether or not this is applicable. Uh, can you give me a power roll for Jason, please? Yeah, uh, that's a five. So, yeah, you've got an extreme success. I've got an ordinary one. So, yeah, this thing, you know, as I said, its fingers are uh, sort of merging into the back of your hand. And it looks like it's trying to push in deeper. But at this stage, that isn't happening. The two of you are sort of half merged. But whatever it's trying to do hasn't quite worked yet. Right. Max and Jonesy were both running in. So w- what are your decks? 70. 80. Okay, so Jonesy's going first. He's, he's going to try and bring his metal bar down on this thing's arm to try and release Jace. You get a bonus die on this. Thank fuck. Because <laughs> I rolled an 82. <laughs> <laughs> that is a... Oh, that's a 42. And my fighting brawl is 40. Can I spend two luck? You can. Yes. Okay, that's a success. And so you're using this iron bar that you grabbed off the ground. Uh, It's one of the supports that used to be holding one of the wooden horses in place. So you've grabbed hold of this and you're smacking it down. Uh, I'd say that's worth a d6 damage. Nice. Plus damage bonus if you have one. Uh, No damage bonus, I don't think, but I rolled a a six. Full damage. Okay. So, yeah, this goes down and sinks into the spongy flesh of this creature, and it cuts through the arm. Uh, You've actually severed the arm. The arm is still holding on to the back of Jason's hand and is still attached there, its fingers still sinking into his flesh. But the rest of the creature uh, staggers back at this stage. That's right, you don't mess with us! (laughs) I got you, boy, quick, let's get away! And what's Max doing? I'm going to, like, just try and punch it and then follow the guys, I guess. Like, try and get it down so we can get away. Put some distance between us, maybe. Well, let's get the fuck out of here. You give me a fighting brawl roll, and with its one remaining hand, it's going to try to grab your hand. You get a bonus die on this as well, because it's outnumbered. Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, I got 45 and 66, so 45 versus 75 fighting brawl. And so that's an ordinary success, and I got a hard success. You bring your fist down, and with its remaining hand, it does to you pretty much what it did to Jason. It grabs your wrist, and once again, the fingers start sinking in. Can you give me a power roll, please? I got 14 versus 65, so a hard success. Okay, I got a hard success as well. I rolled a 12. Can I spend one look? 
I would make that into an extreme. If if you'd like. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, from inside the booth, Kevin can hear all sorts of commotion. I mean, first of all, there was the shattering of glass, and now there seems to be a punch-up going on outside. So Kevin is going to... He's not going to run out, but he's just going to walk out while taking another look at his cell phone. Kind of check back on that message he got earlier to see if that really happened. Yeah, the message is still there. Uh, One thing you notice as well, which you may not have noticed previously, is the fact that you've got no reception. You've got no bars here. But somehow that message still came through. Mm. Can I tell if it's a UK number? Because being from America, I don't have too many UK contacts, but I know that mm. Ellie was from England. Yeah, I mean, you'll have to dig into the contact that's there. So I'm sort of picturing Kevin coming out of the booth as this this fight with this strange spongy creature is going on, just sort of stepping over the wreckage of this merry-go-round, focusing entirely on his phone. Absolutely, 100% just face buried <laughs> in the screen. Okay. Then, yeah, you are completely oblivious to everything else that's going on. What you do notice, however, is that, yes, the number that is stored as Ellie in your contacts list, which you don't remember putting there, is a UK number. Again, kind of shoving the phone back into his pocket. He'll probably now take a look at what the commotion was. (laughs) Can I get some help? Uh, this, this, This thing has got me. Do you see that? Do you see that? I chopped his hand off. <laughs> is the hand stuck on me? It is. Oh, get it off. Get it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what, what the hell are you guys doing? First thing I want is the sanity roll for Kevin as he sees what's going on out here. Okay. I rolled a nine for Kevin, so that's going to be an extreme success. Okay. Yeah. Kevin is okay with this whole situation. Yeah, I worked here, so I'm used to seeing all this kind of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, now let's just deal with Jason's situation. So, yes, you had this severed, spongy hand and forearm. His fingers sunk into the back of your hand. You're trying to shake it off. It's trying to hold on. So give me a fighting brawl roll to see whether you can do that. And... I'm going to see whether it can hold on. That is the biggest fail on a fighting brawl roll. Uh, I got a 98 against a 30. So that is a fumble. So, yes, yeah, somehow, and I got a success. So somehow what happens is in the process of shaking this around, you actually manage to not only not get it loose, but hit the main body of the creature. Hmm. As it does so, the severed arm just sticks to it like glue and reconnects. So let's have that power roll again. And 79. That is a fail. Okay. Well, what me at least seem like a good outcome to the rest of you is that this creature disappears. Well, when I say it disappears, once the hand reconnects with the rest of the body, as the rest of you are getting ready to do whatever you were going to do, it just basically slithers up Jason's arm and you can just see it just disappearing inside his flesh that the whole thing just gets sucked inside him just like smoke or something like that and then suddenly it's gone can you roll a d4 for Jason please I got a three well thank god for that that was scary (laughs) Uh, wait where'd he go what do you feel? Is it inside you? It went in me. I, I don't. I don't feel much different yet. You don't. You feel okay. Uh, yeah, the the thing has just disappeared. All right, no big deal, right? What, what, what was that? What are y'all doing out here? I climbed out the mirror and it grabbed me hand, and then Josie chopped his hand off, and then it like got inside me. What the fuck am I doing? It was like sponge. It grabbed. It grabbed me as well. Like it's. I don't know what it is. 
please tell me you got it on camera. Are you asking me? <laughs> I mean, you're the camera guy. Who else am I going to ask you, dopey fucker? I was swinging a tripod at him. <laughs> you each hear this woman's voice. Just going, but Baz, Baz, where are you, Baz? Baz, I, 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 I don't know where I am, Baz. Are you there, Baz? Are you there? Jason can't work out where the voice is coming from. The rest of you can see Jason's lips move and the voice seems to be coming out of him. Uh, what are you, what are you doing? What the hell just happened there? What do you mean, what happened? Did you hear that girl? But, do, where's Baz? Y- you're that girl, I think. Stop messing around. What are you talking about? Who are you? James is going right up and, like, shouting in, like, Jason's face, but, like, into his mouth. Well, like, get out of my mouth! <laughs> Stop it, I'm talking to the girl. Oi, what's your name? Where are you? Uh, it's me, I'm Tracy. Wait, wait, where's Baz? Where's Baz? Never mind about that right now. Where are you? I don't know. Man, this is some fucked up shit. Oh, you know what? Those cups a minute ago. I bet we inhaled like mold or something. I bet we're all hallucinating. Do you feel high? I don't feel high, but this is weird as fuck. I don't feel high at all. Sh- sh- should we should we slap Jason? I mean, it can't hurt. I would, yeah, <laughs> think about it for a while. <laughs> Jason, is that, you're fucking with us, right? You're just... I'm not that good at voices. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Tracy, Tracy, why... Wh- what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Tracy's gone, I guess. Tracy has gone. Yeah, she's... Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no response. Are you telling me that that girl was me? That was your voice. You were just fucking with us. After whatever weird shadowy fairground trick we just saw. No, look, I've done a lot of shit, but I'm not fucking with you here. No, we're all high off that mold. Let's go through it, see if we can find some more. <laughs> Jason, Jason, who's Baz? Who's that? I don't know who the fuck Baz is. I don't even know who Tracy is. Okay, hold up. Let, let's let, let's think about this, right? And I'm assuming because Max like got a three on his sanity roll, like I'm going to logic this away for my own sanity as much as anything else. Like, look, we're at fairground. Hmm. They had, like, cool little optical illusions and tricks. Like, there's got to be some sort of old this trick that came out and grabbed us. It was, like, it was like spongy, like an inflatable thing. And that was it, right? No, no, no. We we, we never had anything like that. That, that. that was weird, guys. That was weird. I told you, it's a group hallucination caused by inhaling strange fucking mold. Who was huffing mold? What mold are you talking about? You don't have to huff it. It's the spores. You've not heard about this stuff. It gets in you and then you, you hallucinate and you see all kind of crazy shit. This is what happens when you watch Discovery Science alone. And <laughs> take some of the science you run with us. Listen, there is nothing wrong with Discovery Science. I've learned some cool shit on there. you got to stop listening to Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you got to stop picking the mushrooms out of cow shit, man. <laughs> Clearly, we were all hallucinating and it's gone now. Like, there's no lady inside him, is there? I don't see one. I don't hear one. It's over. Unless you want to go and huff some more of this mold, I reckon we got on with trying to get a film and then get the fuck out of here. Oh my god, he's speaking in dog now. <laughs> not possessed by a dog! <laughs> uh, he hasn't lost any sanity, but he's still barking. Oh. <laughs> uh. J- Jason, do you feel okay? How- how's your body? How do you feel? I feel all right. I, like, other than the altercation, like, nothing's wrong. Right, there's an easy way to solve this. Check the camera, because you had the camera out pointing at all those mirrors and stuff before you tried to, you know, attack the mm-hmm. imaginary mushroom creature. Check the camera. If it's there, then we're fucked, and we're in Silent Hill or Ring or something. Or, if it's not there, then we need to find some of this mold, because we can sell that shit in London. <laughs> All right, so Jason, like, picks up the camera and um, opens up the little viewfinder and uh, backs it up and hits play to watch the last, like, five minutes. Yeah, I mean, for the last minute or two since the spongy creature disappeared inside you, um, 
Yeah, I mean, some of the time the camera was pointing towards you because I don't think anyone's been necessarily keeping a tight control over it at this stage. So, yeah, I mean, you do see that when the woman was talking, or when you heard the woman's voice, your lips were moving. You also noticed something else, which is every now and then the image flickers slightly and distorts the image of you. Like the drone? No, it's not not like that. Yeah, it's just, yeah, the, your image looks, I mean, it's just like for a couple of frames or, you know, it, it, it just looks wrong. Are, are you seeing this? Oh, let me try something. I'm going to reach into my pocket and pull out my phone camera and, like, point it at Jace. Okay. And, and yeah, I mean, as, as you record it again, yeah, just every now and then the image flickers slightly and just looks looks a bit wrong. Holy shit, I've seen this before. I know exactly what this is. This is Final Destination. You've been touched by death. He's coming for you. Oh, it's so funny. That, wait, that's name is Baz? No, well, I don't think so. <laughs> Didn't get that part of the movie, no. No, I only watched the first scene with the road and all the people being crushed and stuff. It was badass. No, but like, if you get all blurred and stuff, that means that you're going to die. I don't want Sorry. to die. You're, like, It's not that the image looks blurred. It's, it just seems to flicker as if there's something else there for a moment. Okay, okay, hold on. So, look, there's something weird happening. Kevin, like, you're the only person who's been here before. Was there any... Tracy or Baz or anyone who worked here before? No, no, I don't. Not, I don't think not so. That you remember now? Yeah, I don't think so. But but I think I figured it out anyway. So, like I said earlier, the park it seems so much longer than ten years since it's been open. So I I think we've actually time traveled into the future, and the flickering. Did you see Back to the Future in the UK? You've seen this. It it's like. Uh, we've done something that has erased Jason's existence, and we need to get it back. So we gotta make a giant steam engine and go back to the Cowboys, you're telling me? Well, it's Back to the Future 3. <laughs> oh, if we're doing that, I'm getting a hoverboard. Well, that's part two. He's talking about part one. Yeah, that's like two cut collabs from now. In this one, <laughs> we just need to go to a dance. <laughs> I gotta get me parents back together. <laughs> <laughs> Jonesy, Jonesy, point point your camera at uh, at Max because the thing touched him as well. See if he's flickering. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that. And, and while I'm doing that, Jace, you got to rewind the film. See if it, you know before when you did the mirror thing and she came out. All right, all right. So I'm rewinding. Okay. And I'm putting the camera at Max. Yeah, Max's image does not flicker. Scott, did you say there's no signal for the the phone? Yeah, no signal at all. So I can't, I can't try to text Ellie back. Hmm, you can try. I, you're not showing any bars. I mean, that doesn't stop you actually trying to send a text. Sure. So I'll, I'm going to try to reply to to that text I got and just say, "Are you here?" How are you spelling that? Th- the way the kids do with just the letter R and okay. the letter U. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Al- almost immediately. I- just you, you, you get a response back just as you know, pretty much as soon as he hits send, even though it doesn't seem to have sent. That just comes back saying, "I never left." Okay, I'm not going to say anything to the group yet, but I think Kevin drops his phone. Okay, and just kind of backs away from the phone. What your phone shock you? No, no, there's something. Something wrong with the network here. Uh, c- can you can you look at my phone and tell me tell me what you see, Jason? Yeah, yeah, all right. And so with his other hand that the camera's not in, he picks up the phone and looks at his text messages. Do I see this text message? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, who's Ellie? Yeah, uh, Ellie. It's it's not gonna make any sense. Uh, Ellie's some uh, a girl I used to work with uh, here at, at Funland. Like fourteen years ago, and uh, 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 yeah, I don't. I, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. She's she can't be texting me. 
Well, why can't she be texting you? She's texting you. Look. It sounds like you you got an in. You should go get this bird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or does she, like, drive a Mondeo or something? Because there was a Mondeo outside. Or a Passat. There was, there, was, there was a Passat outside. There was also a couple of fucked up cars that were back there. Did you see those? I had the fastest punto <laughs> in the West. <laughs> if I tell you something, you have to... You have to swear you're not going to fuck with me while we're in here. You're not going to tell us you killed her, right? You're not that guy, are you? No, 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 no. Okay, cool. Yeah, well then, go ahead. But Ellie, Ellie is... She's dead. You told us you didn't kill her. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill her, but she's dead. How'd she fucking die? She's dead. She, She just died. She just died. I didn't have anything to do with it, but she's dead. She died 14 years ago. I don't don't know why someone's texting me pretending to be Ellie, but I don't know. It's it's fucked up. Oh, genius. Hold up, hold up. Why did you save a number and call Ellie then? I didn't. I I didn't have her. She texted me. I didn't have her number in my phone. If she's dead, why'd you text her back? I just, uh, she worked here with me. I just I, I felt like someone's someone's fucking with us. I want to see if they're here. Okay, look, I see what's going on here. This is punk, isn't it? Did, we're, we're trying to like resurrect the YouTube channel, and you're all just fucking with me, right? I would kill you, Jason, if this was your idea. Oh, look, it's not my idea. I'm not here fucking with you. No, 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 no. This is this is real, but it's not real. It's not her texting me, but we need to figure out who it is because I don't I don't even have a signal. And she texted me back and like before I even hit the send button, it felt like. Well, like, don't tell me that she's not texting you. I just watched a monster climb out of a fucking mirror and get inside me. No, mate, that was the mushrooms. All right, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's look at a video. And we click play. You play it back, and you see, yeah, exactly what your eyes saw, this spongy thing climbing out of the mirror. The only difference is that the spongy shape flickers the same way as your image is now flickering. Fuck this shit, we're getting out of here now, and then we're going to the Winchester for a fucking pint. Let's go. (laughs) Just, Jonesy, we got, we got... We gotta leave Jason here. We gotta leave Jason here. Let's go. What do you mean leave Jason here? Wait, I'm not staying here. Uh, right, fuck this. Which way's the exit? I can't tell with all this goddamn mist everywhere. Well, there's the main entrance behind you, but there's also one of the fire exits just off to your left from here. Come on, let's go. Let's go quickly. Let's run. You keep up, Kevin. You keep up. We need to get out of here quickly. I know a shortcut. I know a shortcut. There, there's there's a little first aid stand behind the the carousel here. Y'all y'all go through there. I'll follow you. There's a there's a door and it goes to the underground corridor, and we can take that all the way to the main entrance. Yeah, that sounds like a fucking good idea. Yeah, you want to go to the underground <laughs> corridor after the spirit possessed one of us? Great, let's go, Scooby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh mate, that that doesn't sound like a good idea. Well, we have our phone flashlights. I mean, hold up, it might be the worst idea. We did have, like, weird magic disappearing fence <laughs> gate, right? Like, that was kind of messed up. Look, it's up to y'all. I, I'm not going first, but but that's just a, a beeline to the exit. How about we save that as, like, plan B? <laughs> it's like plan F to me. <laughs> Jonesy, I'm following you. I'm following you. I just wanted to let you know our options here. Right, I know the way. Let's go. Follow me. Do you? <laughs> so you're running for what the fire exit are you uh no the way we came in okay so you go back the way you came and yeah it only takes you a few minutes to get back there I and mean, this isn't a large park as i mentioned before you get there and you can see the ticket booth you can see the remains of the turnstiles what you can't see is any way out. There is just this lattice work supporting the roller coaster track, maybe, that is just encasing the entire park, including the entrance where you came in. Oh. What the fuck? I can't climb this. 
You don't need to look. And so Jonesy's still got that huge metal bar from the, the merry-go-round and he's just going to charge and crash it down into this lattice work. Yeah, you, you smash it in. And yeah, you dent one of the lattices and raise it up again. And you can see as you do so, the lattice or rather the the spar just where it was deformed just pops back out and before you have a chance to bring it down again it just seems to have fully recovered from the damage you did and if you carry on smacking into it I mean that just happens over and over again at the same time you can just feel all these eyes watching you from out between the the spars so Jonesy just gets increasingly angry and out of control and just mm-hmm. begins to hit it again and again and again. So he hit it harder! Yeah, he's, he's smashing away, and eventually, at some point, yeah, this, this ancient rusted aluminium pole that you're using that used to support one of these merry-go-round horses yeah it just it just gives it starts bending and then yeah with one of the cracks down it just snaps in half fucking hell it's no good it's i can't we're trapped there's no way out give me my phone jason give me the phone back there you go kevin's gonna text ellie and say "Uh, i'm sorry help us okay anyone else got any real ideas other than the guy who's getting catfished in the corner. No, anyone? I tell you what, and, like, Jonesy holds up the, like, half-broken iron bar, which I guess is maybe sheared off, and says, any of those fucking creatures come near me and they're going to fucking regret it. Right, we need another way out. There's a ping back on Kevin's phone, and the message just says, that's why you're here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I came with y'all. This is some kind of karmic bullshit. I... Oh, God. What did I do? I don't... What What do you mean, what did you do? What did you do to her? Yeah, what kind of karma are we getting? No, I didn't... Look, I, I was I was pretty young. I didn't do anything. I didn't I didn't kill her. I didn't... I don't know who killed her. I don't know anything, but... But I know she's dead, and I saw it, and I didn't... I didn't do anything. I didn't help her. I didn't call the police. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't do anything. And now she's texting us, and we're locked in this park, and I don't... I just don't... It can't even be real. It, it's, it's not real. This isn't real. Jonesy stands up and he's holding the iron bar really threatened. He's like, what did you do to her? I I told you I didn't do anything. I just I, I just tried to push it out of my head. I I, I know she died. I just I, I didn't do anything. I, I Wait, Where did she die? What do you mean she died? What do you mean you didn't call anyone? Does anyone know she's dead? What, what the hell is going on? Clearly she's not dead. She's texting you. Everyone knows she's dead. She died here in the park, and I... <sighs> Look, we were we were on a break. We were drinking together, and I just stepped off to take a piss, and I heard heard all this crazy shit, and I, I came out, and there were these, like, lights and flickering, and I, I didn't know what the hell was going on, but I saw Ellie, and she was lying there, but she was on, on the other end of the corridor, and I just... I got scared, and I ran, and I... And I just, I didn't call the police. I didn't do anything. I, I, I thought they might blame me. But now she's texting me and she's trapped us here in the park and I need help. Just help me. She's trapped us or she's trapped you? I don't know. I... No, fuck that. No. Where was she? Kevin, where was she? Where did she die? She was in that tunnel. That, that corridor under the first aid booth. You were sending us back to where this girl died. Yeah, but there's a that tunnel. It, it runs all the way out of the park. You, we'll, we'll come out uh, th- through the gift shop, the the security office. We don't have to deal with any of this this lattice bullshit. It was just it's it's a it's a straight line out of the park. All right, Jonesy, what do you think? Here, take this, and like you'll give Frost the other end of this like sharpened pole to Jason. Let's go down there and let's fucking let's let's sort out these ghosts. All right, let, let's do it then. Come on, let's go. So you head back down towards the log flume because the first aid booth is just outside the log flume. Just before you get there, however, there is another ride that's between you and the log flume. And you remember, I mean, this was the chair planes. 
for those of our listeners who aren't British, does anyone want to explain what cheriplanes are? Because apparently I found the term is unknown outside the UK and Ireland. I didn't know what the term was, but I know know exactly what you mean. They're terrifying, first of all. So it's a giant carousel that lifts, what, probably 50 feet into the air? Hmm. And has swings hanging off them and spin in a circle. So the swings more or less go out probably, not horizontal, but like probably up 30 or 40 degrees. Terrifying. And they're connected by chains. Basic chains you'd get for like locking a bike. Doesn't feel safe in any way. (laughs) And we send our five-year-olds on them. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Have fun. (laughs) We just call those uh, flying swings here. Yeah. Ah, okay. There's the old cherry planes that are between you and the log flume. And as you get close to them, you can hear in the fog before you can see them the rattling of chains. Max, Kev, quick, go find a weapon. We can handle this. Kevin looks down at that fake rifle that he's holding. Yeah, fine. Uh, Is there any, like, bits of chain or plank of wood or something? Just hanging around place broken. Yeah, there's plenty of rotten bits of wood and old bits of scaffolding and stuff like that. The, this place is lousy with improvised weapons. Can I toss Max the folded up tripod? Oh, sure. Here, take this. Cheers. And I'm going to take out my Swiss Army knife and uh, unleash the corkscrew. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're in trouble now. <laughs> you got to decant the fuck out of them. <laughs> You want that thing that takes the stones out of horses' hooves. <laughs> <laughs> so Jonesy's going to start, like, edging towards the... Like, he's, he's holding his weapon out in front of him. Other hand out, fingers splayed, and, like, walking slowly towards the sound. Come out! We're ready for you! So, as you get closer, you can see, first of all, just a shape moving in the darkness. The, the shape is above you a bit it's not on the ground whatever it is just this murky shape in the fog this would be a real good time to find a tunnel or something guys like get out of here chase 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 turn camera on all right so jonesy's gonna start stepping towards this thing is it is it the drone is that the, is that the drone up there you step forward a bit and yeah it's not the drone you can see that the stand of the cheriplanes is angled to one side. It's partially collapsed. And there are chains hanging down, mostly on one side. Hanging from one of the chains by the neck is a young woman. The chain seems to have been fashioned into some kind of improvised noose and it's been tied around her neck. And she is twitching her tongue is bulging out of her mouth her eyes are bulging and she's just twitching and convulsing as this chain is tight around her neck you can see that there's just filth trickling down the back of her legs you can see her hands just every now and then weakly coming up grasping at the chain and then going back down again oh, fuck she's still alive she's still alive max quick let's help her and like James is just going to drop his bar and run towards the, the structure to try and climb up to so find a way of releasing her, like breaking the chain or climbing down to her or whatever he can do. Yeah, like Max run over as well, like put you standing on my shoulders and stuff because like we're used to doing parkour tricks, like flatland parkour tricks, so something like that. And Jason gets down and gets a good angle of this because he's thinking about the YouTube channel still. Huh. Oh, what a, what a pro. I don't know if we can reach, like how high is she? Would we need to climb up the structure or can we do it by gymnastics? She's not that high up. If you got on top of Max's shoulders, that would probably be enough. Quick, stay still, Max. I'll get her. Okay. (laughs) So if Max takes you on his shoulders, is that what Max is doing? Yep. That gives you the right angle to do this, and you can get up there. And, yeah, I mean, it takes a bit of work, and there's a, a few near spills as you're wobbling around. But, yeah, you do manage to eventually lift her up enough that you can loosen the the chain from around her neck. And the, the, the three of you just fall to the ground, basically in an untidy heap, just once she's loose. But, you know, she's there on the ground now, just gasping for air, just this horrible rattling sound coming from her throat. You can see that her throat is just completely crushed. 
<laughs> she, she's fighting for breath. We did it. We did it. We saved her. I saved her. I, she's saved. And he's going to like crawl over to her and he's going to try and do first aid. Yeah, she's just looking at you and there's this... <laughs> noise from her throat uh, okay so I got a 13 versus 50 I'll spend 3 luck to make it an extreme success yeah this is where you get very confused perhaps because you're trying to obviously clear her airways because this is the basic thing you do in first aid you make sure someone is breathing and yeah you, you, you check her mouth and as far as you can tell her trachea, her larynx, have been completely crushed. There's just no way in your estimation... I mean, you're not an expert, you're not a doctor, but there's no way you can figure out why the fuck she's still alive. Please, come on, I I can save you. No, I can do this, help! And he's, like, desperately trying to, like, fix this broken form, using everything he knows. I can do this, come on! Breathe, breathe, breathe! Come on, please! Jonesy, I got British. Hold on, Jonesy. <laughs> <laughs> when you fail at your own accent, <laughs> you fucked up American. <laughs> <laughs> Jonesy, what do you see? What's going on over there? I think I think she's fine. Like her fruit, her fruit's crushed, but she's breathing. She's she seems to be all right. Here, you are. like, and he's gonna try and like help her up. Come on, we need to get. We need, to get, we need to get an ambulance or something. Come on, let's get to the tunnel. Help, help me carry her. Yeah, you, you get her to, to her feet. You notice oh, she's breathing a bit more easily now. Yeah, that her throat is actually beginning to look okay now. The skin was all torn up. I, you know, a lot of it was, was ripped from the chains and there was severe bruising. But now, now not so much. And as you help her to her feet, she she looks around in panic, looks at you, and then just turns and starts running full pelt away from you. What the fuck? No, come back! Come back! I saved you! And, like, Jonesy's just going to run after. Uh, Jonesy, I think it's probably okay. Like, like let, let her go. Like, this... Not our fight, buddy. He's gone. Bye. So, Jonesy has disappeared off in the fog somewhere. We can follow Jonesy, but... It was Jonesy's idea to come here. He got some creepy messages off a person. He then contacted you, Kevin. Maybe he's a copycat killer. Maybe he's trying to freak us all out. He's the guy who saw something in the clown head. There was nothing there but a rat. He's seeing eyes in lattice work. Like Maybe Jonesy's messing with us at best. Oh, no. Are going to kill us at worst. You think Jonesy's going to kill us? <laughs> I don't know, but Jonesy is the one who brought us here. Jonesy got, you know, he got Kevin to come all the way here through a subreddit. He thought it's a great idea to come here. He's been real weird and distant the past few weeks, months. Just think about it. Just, I don't know. No, 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 no. There, there's no way Jonesy knew about Ellie. That's, it's not possible. This, no, we, we gotta go get Jonesy. It doesn't make sense. I mean, he's the one talking about we took drugs, we took mushrooms. He's trying to convince us that it's mold. Or maybe he's trying to rationalize it. Maybe he dosed us. Jones, eh? Yeah, well, let's cut over and see what's happened with Jonesy. So this woman got a bit of a head start on you, and the fog is quite thick. Do you want to try making either a hard spot hidden or an ordinary listen roll to see whether you can work out where she is? Yeah, they're both exactly the same. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh, I rolled a 38, so I failed either way. So you've gone running off into the fog trying to find this woman, and you heard footsteps for a while, but you've completely lost your bearings. And now you realise that you have no idea where you are. There is a structure that's looming up in front of you that has got a big leering clown head painted on the top of it that's looking down at you. But that's really the only thing around here you see. James is sort of looking around and he's going to like wipe his eyes and then look up at the clown and go, What are you looking at? 
fuck am I? What the fuck's going on? The hell did I get here? From somewhere off in the distance, you hear a meh sound. The fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I live for those moments. <laughs> <laughs> Is this. <laughs> what the fuck, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Jonesy's gonna look. I don't. He's like dropped his weapon, so he's gonna look around for something else that he can use as a weapon. Yeah, if you look around, I mean, obviously, like I say, there is this structure in front of you. You can probably find a rock on the ground, or rather, a bit of broken concrete slab that you could use. Alternatively, there is a bit of broken mirror on the ground here as well. He's gonna lean down to pick it up and then look at it and look at himself. He's probably just like face caked in dust with sort of tear marks through it and then just look back at it and go fuck that well actually no no it isn't because you look into it and you do not see your reflection in it again you just see grey mist inside the mirror fuck is going on here dead girls being hanged or hung or something and goats and spooky mirrors I'm, I'm going home fuck this shit <laughs> and he's just gonna he's not even gonna pick up a rock he's just gonna walk off in a direction he thinks might be the exit okay well we'll come back to you in a moment so the other three were trying to work out what to do next what is your plan at this stage what do you what do you want to do Max I, th- I think we have to go get Jonesy but I, I barely know the guy and I feel like we gotta do this look I, we, we, we'll go get Jonesy but just just think about what I said he's like he's been acting weird he's been I think if he doesn't want to kill us, I think he wants to try and force me and Jason out of the channel, Jason. I don't know if you noticed, but I think he wants to take it solo and he thinks he's the talent when really it's you and me making him look good. He couldn't he couldn't turn on a computer. I don't run a YouTube channel on his own. I mean, he might want to go solo, but I don't want him to fucking die in the woods. We ought to go help him. Oh, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we, look, we, we just... And, and maybe that's all he's doing. Maybe he's just being worried about Channel. Maybe he's trying to kill us. Just, just think about it. Let's go save him, though. Let's go save him. Right. Let's go. We know we know where he ran off to. We, we know the direction. Let's just go. We'll, we'll, we'll yell. We'll announce ourselves as we go. Okay. We say we shout Marco, but I don't think, think he knows who Marco Polo is. So, like, just... If you see any, like, <laughs> concession stands look like they might have sugary drinks or, like, slushy syrup, that's where we're probably going to find them. We'll, we'll yell parkour. <laughs> alright so I guess, we, I guess we head off in the direction of Jonesy yeah well you, you head off in the direction that you last saw him running in whether or not that's where he's ended up is a whole different story but you head off in that direction and you don't see him or at least not you know, initially you, you make your way through the park You make your way past one of the water features, past the boating pond, past the little remote control pond that was there. And on the other side of it, in the fog, you see a flickering light somewhere. And just as the wind changes, or at least what passes for wind around here, the air is fairly still, but just for a moment you catch the smell of something burning did you smell that i do smell it can you can you zoom in on that with your camera okay so jason gets the camera out and pans in at the flickering light you you zoom in as best you can but you are doing this through relatively thick mist you realize, however, that, yeah, you're looking at some kind of structure that's got a fire lit there. Yeah, it, the, the fire seems to be burning inside the shell of... Yeah, you can't quite make out what it is, first of all. But then, yeah, you, you can see as you pan up slightly that there is a sign over the top that, in very faded paint, you can just make out through the mist, and says Dodgems. Or, sorry, bumper cars for our American listeners. There we go. All right. <laughs> yeah, bumper cars, yeah. It, it shows the aggressive nature of your country versus the UK, doesn't it? And one of all these ones, like, hit them hard. <laughs> <laughs> We're assholes. All right, you see this? It's it's a Dodgem Cart place, ring, arena, stadium. 
Park and Rye. Battlegrounds. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve men enter, one survives. <laughs> the Dodgems. Maybe maybe Jonesy went there and started a fire. He does love burning shit. He's nineteen after all. Look, we got we gotta put this out because let's say that Bill Nye, the science guy, is right, and like there's spores and mold and whatever freaking us out. I can't imagine burning fumes and God knows what asbestos is around this place is going to help us. I'm with you. Let's go. Let's go put it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch y'all do that. But but we got to get Jonesy. Yeah. Is there any like I don't know, any fabric or curtains or like? So I'm imagining there's like um, stalls for fairground games and stuff, and they like can have like mm-hmm. carpet or matting that might be water laden that we can throw over this to like quench it and suffocate this fire yeah there is a collapsed stall that looks like it might have sold popcorn there's you know certainly the remains of a popper rusting over in one corner and there is some kind of matting on the ground underneath and yeah there's a (laughs) noise as you rip it up and you can see all sorts of things just wriggling around underneath it's slimy and wet to the touch but you have got this length of filthy, soggy matting of some kind. I guess we're going to try and throw that over the... Like, how big is this fire? I didn't get the grasp of it when you described it first. Yeah, well, I mean, you'd need to get a bit closer to actually see what's going on. Uh, If you approach it, you can see what seems to have happened is someone has lit a fire inside one of the Dodgem cars. Running with this matting or lino that you said we had, just try and run over and suffocate that down, I guess, and see if Jonesy's around. Okay. Give me a spot hidden roll. Oh, boy. My 25 is not going to like this. <laughs> uh, 83. I'm very concerned with the fire. Safety first, folks. Push the roll. Push the roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if, if you want, you you can push the roll. You know, if, if you pause for a moment as you're running up and just take a proper look around, you, you can probably get a better idea. But you are making yourself perhaps vulnerable by doing so. I am definitely not going to push the roll on a 25% chance. I don't mind. T- I, I have risked many a chance, but not Oh, yeah, where's, where's your sense of fun, Owen? Where's your sense of fun? I have I have objectives and goals. Max has big dreams <laughs> and big secrets. <laughs> Push the roll. Fine, we'll push the roll. So yeah, like... Yay! <laughs> apparently, Max is running up to the dodgem, but gets a weird sense he's being watched, and then, yeah. like, pauses to have a look around to see what's happening. Okay. And he rolled a 10. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I rolled an 80 fucking 6. <laughs> oh, no, God. That's much better. I, I prefer the 86. Oh, God. I hate all of you people. So the rest of you see Max stop for a moment... And there is this, suddenly, I mean, he, he's looking over at the far corner of the Dodgems as if he's seen something there, and is completely oblivious to the fact that there, you know, in the wreckage, just over to one side where it's all overgrown, there was someone waiting there watching. And as he stopped, suddenly you see, you know, the other two of you see this very large man with a shaven head just giving an incoherent cry. And he runs out with this metal pole, what looks like a spear, runs out. And the, the rest of you just see this gout of blood as he rams it straight through Max's throat. Oh. So let's cut over to where Jonesy is. So, sorry about that, Owen. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You've not been a scout before, have you? It's what it's what you get for all the Jonesy hate. I've no Jonesy hate. He's trying to he's trying to kick me on my own channel. Well, let's speaking of Jonesy, let's cut back to where Jonesy is. So Jonesy failed to pick up this bit of mirror, I guess, because that was freaking him out, and had just headed off somewhere in the darkness. Yeah, there's like a fucking goat here. I need to. I need to know. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna follow the bleating. Okay. Yeah, you head over in that direction, and you hear a couple more bleating sounds, and you also hear what sounds incongruously like the clucking of chickens from somewhere in the fog. The fuck? This old McDonald's shit. 
better be near the exit. <laughs> and yeah, as you get closer to it, you see yeah this sort of penned off area, and there's the remains once again of a booth and a, a half collapsed sign that just says Tingzu on it. Where the hell am I? Right. Like he's gonna. He's not really so bothered by the zoo, but he's gonna head over to the the hut to see if there's like a map or something like that to see if he can find out where he is. There must be something around here. Yeah, there there is a map as you look there, and yeah, you reckon looking at this that if you're at the petting zoo or you know as it's listed on the map, uh, Mister Fun's magical menagerie then not too far away from here, you reckon there's the Tunnel of Love just behind you. There's probably the Helter Skelter just off to your right. There's the fire exit just off to your left. You can see that in the the remains of the petting zoo, that, yeah, there do seem to be a couple of goats uh, just wandering around and a few chickens just wandering around as well. Are they, like, locked in? Yeah, I mean, they're penned into the remains of the petting zoo. So this looks like it was all kind of opened up with with fairly low barriers to keep the animals in. And it looks like it's actually perhaps been repaired at some stage, or at least partially repaired, so that the walls are all still intact. And there's some straw down there, and it looks like there's some feed down there. What the hell? Like, Genji's going to, um, like, look around and go, Hey! I found your goats. Are you feeding them? There must be someone around here. Hey guys, I found the fire exit. It's by the goats. Hello? Anyone hear me? And you hear the sound of what sounds like a door shutting from somewhere in the fog on the other side of the petting zoo. And then a clattering sound that sounds maybe like someone locking a door. Jonesy will shout out for maybe like a bit less confidently. Hello? I'm Jonesy. I'm, I'm just looking for the way out. Can you can you help? Yeah, you see a shape coming towards you through the fog. It's a woman who looks like she's, I don't know, maybe in her late 40s, early 50s. She's got long grey hair that's uh, hanging raggedly down across her body. She's wearing what looks like it was probably a, a fairly smart, casual dress at some stage, but is is very frayed and you know a, a bit grubby looking. She's wearing an old pair of sneakers or, or plimsolls, and she comes over in your direction just very calmly and gives you a big smile and says, "Are you looking for the way out then?" Oh, thank God! Thank God you're here. Yeah. And he's like reached up, takes his cap off. Yeah, we've we came here just to like have an explore and see what was like whether well, it was fun. And um we lost and there's this smoke everywhere and there was this woman and she was like dead and and <laughs> she the, the the woman laughs for a moment and says, No she wasn't. No one dies here. No, that's good I guess. Yeah, I saved her. You mean what do you mean? And that's a good point, I think, to cut back to the others. Uh, yeah, the, the rest of you have seen this large man in this brown bomber jacket, shaved head, come running out, has run this, this metal pole through Max's neck. There is this gout of blood as Max collapses to the ground, blood bubbling out of his mouth. And this guy is just standing over him with the pole, just screaming incoherently as he's bringing the pole down over and over again, just stabbing Max in the chest. What are the rest of you doing? Can I dodge roll? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> How? Um. <laughs> parkour, man. Parkour, parkour. Yeah, you're going to dodge the 50th stab wound. Uh, <laughs> um, I think Jason is going to run and try to help. I, I want to, like, run and try to, like, knock the guy off and get him to stop stabbing Max. Okay, you, you you run over to do that, and what Kevin you know, sees and what you can hear is this voice once again coming out of your mouth, just going, "By 
Jazz, leave him alone. He's not worth it. Great. <laughs> uh, Kevin's going to turn around and run for that underground utility corridor. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So Kevin's a real piece of work. Fucking Kevin. <laughs> so, so you're leaving the other two to their fate. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he got stabbed right through the neck, right? With that spear. Oh, I, should, I suggest there's a killer and loose. No, we should help him. Now there's an actual killer and loose. Fuck that noise. I'm sure Jason's got this. <laughs> but but as, as Jason hears this voice, which I guess part of him is aware may be coming from his own mouth, you see the, the, the large man just stop. He's holding this, this pike up against the, the twitching bloody form of Max down on the ground and just looks over at you, his, his eyes wide, and said, What the fuck did you say? I didn't say anything. And again, you hear this woman's voice, Baz, put it, put it down, Baz, put it down. Don't hurt him anymore. And th- this guy's just looking at you in absolute incredulity. Can I use this opportunity to strike this man since he's... <laughs> you certainly can. That's yes, the you want best to give me a... That's not the thing, but that's the best option that was available. Like, I, I, really, I really want to deck the guy. When you say deck him, are you just trying to hurt him? Are you trying to pin him to the ground? What I want to, to knock do? him out. I'm going to try and punch him in the, right in the jaw and uh, okay. s- see what I can do. I'll, I'll give you a uh, bonus die on your fighting brawl roll because he is Yay. so taken aback at, at what has happened here. He is, of course, going to try to twat you with the pole, though. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I'll spend 17 points of luck and make this a success. Okay. You, you lamp him on the jaw. He tries to hit you with the pole, but I rolled 72, so that's complete failure on his fighting brawl. So, yeah, you, you smack him in the jaw, and he, he staggers back and sits down on the ground, just looking confused and dazed. I mean, he's looking at the bloody form of Max down on the ground, who's still gasping and panting for breath, the you know, huge bubbles of blood coming up from his mouth and his throat. And this guy is sitting there, just staring at that, staring at the pole, looking around just in sheer animal panic. Max is, yeah, it it looks like half his throat is just torn out at this stage. Uh, Can I try to help him? You certainly can. Can I, like, rip a piece of my shirt and, like, try to, like, at least, Mm. like, stop the bleeding? Yeah, yeah, you can try to... Put a bit of pressure on and staunch the bleeding. I wouldn't recommend a tourniquet, but... Uh, yeah, right, because the airway and all that. <laughs> Maybe I take the shirt off and, like, wad it and just press. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay, give me a first aid roll. See how that goes. How do I look with my shirt off? I got a 12! <laughs> uh, Jason, am I dead? <laughs> you, you, you say that and it sort of comes out as... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not dead yet. <laughs> I've got so much mythos. I'm summoning something. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so I can't hear him, but I'm putting pressure. As you're wiping, or at least soaking up some of the blood, y- you can see something happening that just doesn't really make any sense to you, which is, you know, they, there's this, you know, huge flap of skin that's just been torn down and there was sort of red flesh underneath. And as you're, you're putting the pressure on, you can see just the skin going back into place and just sealing up and the whole wound just closing again. Man, that was a hell of a twelve. Are you all right? You're healing yourself. I tried to say, I, I, I don't know. However, that comes out. It, it probably is kind of... <laughs> what did you say? Some, somewhere, somewhere between Donald Duck and Satan. I take out my phone and just type into the, into the note section. Do I look fucking okay, Jace? Show it to him. <laughs> oh, he's just sarcastic now. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Uh, takes back, takes back the phone. I'm fucking British. Of course, I'm sarcastic. <laughs> J- <Jace. laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so what's the what's the attacker doing now? He, he's he's still sitting down on the ground, just like he just can't process any of this. At that point, can Max put his phone in his pocket and just start kicking the guy in the ground? Like, not to hurt him, but, like, frustrated. Yeah, he, he, he shuffles back a bit, and he's leaning up against the, the wreckage of the, the dodgem stand. And, yeah, he's just... And this, this almost little boy voice comes out of his mouth as he's looking over in your direction. And he just says, Trace? You are listening to Ain't Slayed Nobody. For ad-free episodes, heaps of bonus content, and special programming, please join our Patreon posse at patreon.com slash ain't slayed. Or subscribe to Ain't Slayed Nobody Plus at Apple Podcasts. See the show notes for full credits, and help us grow by posting friendly reviews and spreading the word to your friends and followers. Thank you and good luck out there.